Hi everyone, this is Sarah, the Catholic Homemaker. Today I wanted to show you all the books I bought for my oldest daughter for her preschool curriculum, for homeschooling curriculum for next year. First of all, I'd like to welcome all of you to my channel and all of you who are new to my channel. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel so we can continue to grow this community. Also hit the thumbs up button if you like this video, hit the notification bell for all notifications so you know when I post, which is every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Also, please comment below what kind of curriculum you're doing, if you're homeschooling your children or which ones you're considering. And please share this video as well so that more people can see it. All these things you do will help my video to be shared and seen more. Let's jump right into it. So I already did a homeschooling video a while back, over a year ago, I think. And it was all about Mother of Divine Grace, um, Catholic homeschool curriculum. And that's what the, this book is based off of that curriculum. They have a whole site. Um, but that's where I got started with reading this book is Designing Your Own Classical Curriculum by Laura Burquist. And so there's a lot of good information here. It goes grade by grade. For preschool, there's not a whole lot of information. Actually, none at all. It's just starting with kindergarten. So on her website, on Mother of, Divine, Mother of Divine Grace's website, there is a whole curriculum for kids. And so that's what I did. I did the Mother of Divine Grace curriculum combined with the Mater Amabilis curriculum, which is a Charlotte Mason Catholic homeschooling curriculum. So Charlotte Mason was not Catholic. She was a Christian, but Mater Amabilis uses Charlotte Mason's methodology um, for all the grades. It goes preschool all the way through 12th grade on Mater Amabilis, but it's from a Catholic perspective. So it's usually using Catholic materials for the religion part, especially. So First, I will show you the syllabus for Mother of Divine Grace. I also printed out the Modern Mobilis one, which is pretty simple. Um, recommendations for preschool, number of literacy activities, 20 to 30 minutes total of daily. Religion up to 10 minutes daily. Story time daily up to 20 minutes. We do way more than that on average for story time. Um, I've been doing that since birth for my children. In addition to this four structured time aim to include nature study and art and craft activities every week. So art and craft activities is just definitely something I'm trying to build on and get more into the habit of, but I love the nature study thing. So it was hard to choose one curriculum because I liked aspects of both, but we'll see how we like this this year and going forward, I might choose one or the other. But I am kind of leaning a lot with Charlotte Mason and I've heard a lot of positive things from parents, just their stories from their own families, their own experience. Um, so it breaks it down by subject in here and by week. So it's not like a truly strict syllabus. Um, for Mother of Divine Grace, it is kind of more formal, I would say, but it's not really that intimidating. And there's either a two-year plan or a one-year plan. I'm gonna go with the one-year plan with my daughter to see how she does. Um, these are pre-kindergarten readiness skills in here. And see, here's an example of like the two-year plan, breaking it down. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, but it's breaking it down Monday, religion, phonics, math, and reading. Um, and then you're not doing, some subjects you're not doing every single day in this curriculum. So handwriting, it looks like it is once a week. And it's a pretty simple thing because it says scribble each heart for one activity, complete a maze. And that's in one of the workbooks that we have. That was another thing I was going back and forth about was getting workbooks. I didn't get all the workbooks that were recommended by Mother of Divine Grace. I just kind of chose a couple that I thought might be helpful. So we'll just see again. And then for the one year plan, this is what a day looks like. It's, it's a little more full, 
So here's what the schedule kind of looks like. Um, for the two-year plan, the total time is about 30 minutes a day. And it looks like for the second year, it's going up to 43, all the way up to 63 minutes, or maybe for alternate weeks. That's a little confusing. For the one-year plan, it's 33 to 48 or 43 to 58 minutes. For three days a week, day four is 10 minutes. So it looks like it's kind of a four-day plan for both of these. Um, the Charlotte Mason one, it's it's not like hard and fast rules about it, but it is a five-day plan. That's how she educated children, and um, it's probably around those times, like 30 to 60 minutes at the most, which I think is like you wouldn't want to go more than that. Okay, moving on to more of the books. I'll go through the Bibles first. So I had a hard time choosing which Bibles I wanted to, so I ended up just getting all the Bibles. A Catholic Child's First Bible. So this is kind of um, just one page and it's a small page, so I could definitely read it to even my younger daughter and she would follow along. This is my big book of Catholic Bible stories. So that's kind of the length. It's just one page, it looks like, at least for the most part. Then there's the children's Bible here. And so that is definitely more complicated, um, but I think my older daughter would be fine with it. And then finally, I actually already owned this before, so that was one thing I didn't need to buy. But these are also about one page. So it's I think it's kind of nice to have a variety of them. All right, more religious material here. I just, um, I wanted to buy like all the recommendations for both curriculums. So I just, um, I didn't just pick and choose for those. I bought everything for the religion. Um, the Holy Rosary. This is one of the St. Joseph picture books. There's a whole series on the back, but it's just teaching you about the mysteries of the rosary. Little Acts of Grace. Um, I've kind of thumbed through it and it's just like teaching children little things that you can do passing a church here's what you can do when you're passing a church bowing your head um oh it's the little things that we do that show love and affection a wink a touch a smile a glance a thank you so sometimes it's just like teaching them little things that they can do and i thought that was a nice little book to have this is another saint joseph picture book um and it's teaching about the mass then come the saint books. This is Children's Book of Saints, and it's also pretty simple. And there's Once Upon a Time Saints. I think these are more saints that most people would have heard of in here. Clement, Anne, um, Elizabeth of Portugal, I don't know about Felix. <laughs> Genevieve. Yeah, some of them I haven't heard of. And then this one, more Once Upon a Time Saints. I definitely haven't heard of probably most of them in here. So that'll be interesting to learn about. Then there's the Illustrated Acts of the Apostles, which is a graphic novel style, which I think is really fun. Then there's Walking with Jesus to Calvary, the Stations of the Cross for Children. And I already started reading the Stations of the Cross to my oldest when it came in the mail a couple weeks ago, and she wanted me to keep continuing. I'm like, my voice is kind of tired. We'll have to come back to it later. <laughs> but I just love that she's so interested in it. This one isn't like academic per se, but it's, we already have another songbook, but this one has other ones in addition to those. Like it has some of the same ones, but it has other ones that we may not have learned before. Like, it has Where is Thumpkin, that's to the tune of Are You Sleeping, which everybody probably knows that one. Um, the Eensy Wincy Spider, which I already knew, but I always thought it was the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Then there's, what are you wearing? Good morning. Oh, Ten Little Fingers to the tune Ten Little Indians. Um, rain, Rain, Go Away. And then... So some of them we have, like Twinkle, Twinkle, Blue, Blue, um, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, and Looby Loo, and um, other ones, Mulberry Bush. But then there's a bunch that we also don't have, so I thought that was really cool. And I got 
Um, most of these books used, some of the ones I directly bought from Mother of Divine Grace because I couldn't find for a better price, like more Once Upon a Time Saints, I couldn't find for the best price, so I just bought it directly there. The curriculum uh, or the syllabus I bought directly from there. Um, and then the, the workbooks that I got. So this is the Harp and the Laurel Wreath, and it's poetry and dictation for the classical curriculum. It's a really classic poetry book that's taught in a few different curriculums that I know of. Um, and at the beginning, there's definitely poems for preschool level in there that they would actually pay attention to. Um, now we come to nature study. I didn't get all of the books yet just because of my budget, but I'm hoping to get them in a little bit later. And this is the year at Maple Hill Farm. That's one of the nature study books recommended by Modern Mobiles for the preschool level. And I already read it to my kids. They loved it because it was teaching all about the farm animals throughout the year. So it goes through each month of the year and the season and what it's like for the animals. This alphabet birds I bought directly from Mother of Divine Grace because um, I could not find it otherwise. Probably because that's the only place they sell it. Um, okay, so it goes through a tracing guide here and a pronunciation guide as well, which is good. And it goes through the whole alphabet. There's beautiful photos, illustrations in here. And it's not a consumable book, so I will be able to use it with other children. And it has a description of each bird in here. So some of them are more common, like a dove, but then there's other ones you may not have heard of, like a kestrel. I mean, I think I've heard of it, but it's just not a common bird. A lyre bird I didn't know about. Um, there's penguin. Tufted titmouse, I didn't know that one. Um, Waxwing and Xenops. So there's definitely birds that are less common in there. Okay, we're getting towards the end. This is the Oxford first book of maths, and this is from the Modern Amabilis curriculum. This was actually an optional book, but I wanted to get it to give me ideas for math activities. So here's kind of what some things look in there. Fractions. Oh, that's cool. Um, questions and answer, answers with some things. Um, let's go to the back and see what else. Oh, this is measuring here. And when I, at the beginning of this video, I was also talking about just the activities they recommend. So in their syllabus, they just recommend things like counting songs and playing games with dice, teaching things about cooking. With Mother of Divine Grace, they had all these different things you could buy for math. So there was at least two workbooks. There were, um, it was like scoop a bug. So I'm not sure exactly what it was trying to teach with that. And then there was like some sort of weight or measuring thing. And I just decided not to buy those things because I thought like, I could just use stuff that we already had. And we'll just see how the, the Charlotte Mason style goes with math. And then this is from Mother of Divine Grace, writing our Catholic faith. So I'll just show you some examples. So these pages are all about counting here. And then this, there's some mazes in here. This is letter recognition. Um, sequencing. Um, that's just showing the whole alphabet there and the numbers. Um, then it's kind of matching in some places. Um, letter recognition again and shapes and colors. So there's all kinds of different things she can work on in there. And she, when she first saw it, my oldest, she was very interested in it. And she was like using her finger to um, match the things or like go through the maze. And she did the same thing in here, the preschool writing skills. These two I got from Mother Divine Grace because I couldn't find them anywhere else. Um, and it's just a lot of mazes and then there's like scribbling or coloring, I think, with that. So there's um, there's different things you can do. This is draw the food on the plate and drink in the cup. And yeah, the, so those are the 
workbooks that I thought might be helpful for her. And I'm happy to say that she was actually interested because I don't want to force her to learn things and then just um, kind of blow up in my face. All right, finally, the last things I bought were the Glory CDs or the Holy Hero CDs. And that was the most expensive thing. So the total that I spent was $371 so far for all those books and these CDs. And the CDs were about $200 directly from Mother of Divine Grace. I could not find them for a better price anywhere online, even used. So that was just kind of crazy to me. But let me just show you which ones come with it. St. Kateri Tekakwitha, St. Cecilia, St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and St. Faustina Kowalska, Blessed Imelda Lambertini, I'm not sure if she has been a saint by now, St. Juan Diego and Our Lady of Guadalupe, St. Miguel de la Mora, St. Teresa of Lisieux, St. Joseph, St. Catherine Drexel, St. Anthony of Padua, St. Joan of Arc, St. Martin de Porres, St. Claire of Assisi. Then there's Catholic prayers, there's daily prayers and prayers of the Mass in here. St. Jose Sanchez del Rio, St. Rose of Lima, St. Maximilian Colby, St. Pope John Paul II, Blessed Miguel Pro, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, Secrets from Heaven, The Story of the Children of Fatima, St. Bernadette Subiro, um, St. Peter, and Blessed Carlo Acutis. And I know he's become a saint by now. I think it was within the past year. I cannot remember for sure, but it was, um, you guys ought to look up that story. It's pretty incredible. I mean, really, any of the saint stories are, we already started listening to this first one with St. Kateri and St. Cecilia, and, um, both are very moving stories, but we're not fully finished yet. Then let me just tell you about the books that I haven't purchased yet that I'm thinking of purchasing. And I definitely want to purchase the Catholic Children's Treasure Box or Treasury Box by the Mary Knoll Sisters. And it's a collection of 20, or it's a series of 20 books. Um, I found it the least expensive on Seton, Seton Homeschool for $79 for all of those. But um, since they were out of print, um, I guess they're technically in print by some companies or maybe one. Um, it's just very expensive to buy that. So I just kind of prioritize some other things and hopefully we can get those a little later. And then there's the nature study books that I haven't gotten yet, the One Small Square series and the Crinkle Root books, or there might just be like one book that they recommend for that, but there's a series of Crinkle Root books by Jim Arnosky. And then One Small Square series is by Donald M. Silver. The other ones I was thinking about are for just the liturgical living through Modern Mobiles is what they recommend. And there's one called Catholic Mosaic by Kay Gibson. And from what I saw from the description of the book, it's just a, a series of books, not a series, but a collection of books throughout the year. And they may be um, less common. I want to say that they are Catholic books in there. And maybe it's related to some of the seasons during the year. I don't know. And then there's Around the Year with the Trap Family by Maria Augusta Trap, you know, from The Sound of Music, um, what her life was about. And I've, I've heard from other people, actually, that that's a very good book. So that's just something I probably want anyway. Then these three are by the same people, Catherine and Peter Fournier. It's Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany in the Domestic Church. And there's Lent and Easter in the Domestic Church and Marian devotions in the domestic church. So some of them are seasonal and some of them are about Marian devotions. And um, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm actually requesting some of those by interlibrary loan to see what I think and see if they're worth buying. And then getting, celebrating the church year with young children by Joan Halmo. And that one sounds good because it's targeted towards young children. 
This book my mother-in-law gave me a while back. It's the Catholic Parent Book of Feast, celebrating the church year with your family. And I will say it's been kind of hard for me to get into this one, but I might just make a better effort to try to try a couple things in it. I, yeah, I mean, there's some things you can just read about that saint for the day, or maybe I just kind of need to bookmark it and put it in a better place. Um, let me know if you guys have used that book before and what you think of it. I think that's it. I know that's a lot of information. Hopefully it's not overwhelming to you guys. And there are other Catholic preschool curriculums out there. I will try to find a list of them and link it for you guys. And um, just let me know what you thought of this video, if it was helpful to you. And I hope you have a wonderful week and may God bless you and your families.